Okay. Cool. Well, I'm excited to be talking a little bit about some Instagram updates. I'm sure that you, you've uh, seen some of these features if you use Instagram for your business um, that we're going to be talking about today or if you use it for personal use. Um, but we'll be talking about a little bit more of the application uh, of how to use these features you know, for your small business um, and your marketing purposes. And uh, you know, if you're not using Instagram right now, still some of what we're going to talk about from a strategic standpoint it will help you... Um, you know, create a framework for your other platforms. Um, but Instagram is a great place to play. I mean, it, it has a huge market share. It consistently ages upwards and downwards um, into older demographics and younger demographics. Uh, and it's one of those winner platforms. And if you're advertising on Facebook, you can and maybe even are advertising on Instagram without knowing it. Uh, we'll go over that later. Cool. So let's get started. Um, the biggest update to Instagram uh, in the past year, um, it's the one that's not as noticeable right off the bat, but it's the algorithm. Um, so just like Twitter is uh, or was, Instagram used to be a chronological platform where you'd go on and you'd look at posts and everything that you'd see would be ordered by when it came out, right? So if you wanted to go and scroll through your feed and try to find stuff, you had to go pretty deep to see stuff from the people that you liked to engage with. Uh, late 2015, Instagram workshopped an algorithm. Um, they launched it to 1% of users last year, and now it's out for everybody. So it's prioritized on what people like, and it's just a very basic algorithm um, based on engagement. So if you comment, like, uh, you know, and look at people's Instagram posts for a long amount of time, like that's the kind of stuff that you're going to see more of. So let's just talk really quick about why they did it. It's always a little frustrating for marketers when an algorithm gets introduced because it means that there's the chance that you're going to get uh, you know, less engagement um, and it definitely happens. But when they did this algorithm, they did see the daily active users, it's kind of this graph in the middle, um, impressions, time spent on the platform and photo uploads all went up by a pretty dramatic factor. Um, and yeah, feel free to jump in with questions. Um, and you know, because it prioritizes content that people like, people are more likely to stay on the platform. So I put how to counter it. Um, it's really how to engage with it, how to use the algorithm for your business. One of the big things, and you know, I could talk about this for half an hour, but is user generated content. Um, this would be sourcing content from people in your network, uh, from people that you know have cool Instagram profiles that are like in your space or in your industry, asking them if you can use their content putting it up there and then tagging them in it, that creates community engagement. Um, it creates more touch points. They're more likely to reference your page in their next posts um, will help kind of help you beat the algorithm. A strong hashtag strategy, which, you know, again, um, I could talk for a long time about, but a strong hashtag strategy includes core branding hashtags that exist in your main post. And then the maximum 26 hashtags that you can have on a comment in a top comment right after you post, and these should all be industry relevant hashtags for you. So go in, go deep, search accounts that post similar kind of stuff to you, similar kinds of businesses, find the hashtags that they're using, because hashtags are like small communities on Instagram. People search hashtags, so they can find out content that's related to their interests. Um, another way to deal with this algorithm is to go live, uh, which we'll talk about later. Instagram Live just happened. It's kind of within stories and similar to Facebook Live, which we're actually broadcasting right now. If you want to see us in the room, you can go um, to Justin or Sarah's Facebook pages or to the JP Media page where we shared it and, and watch us um, sitting here. Uh, and it will push notify your followers if you go live. And then the last one is, you know, it's a little tongue in cheek, but just make better content. I know that that's a really big thing to say, but, um, you know, higher quality imagery, more engaging stuff, find out, you know, test things out, try wacky stuff, you know, try stuff that's super professional looking, stuff that's lowbrow um, until you kind of find that sweet spot. That's how you deal with, uh, with the algorithm. Um, and there's a lot of depth in each of those points, but let's move on to stories. So stories happened, uh, they were a direct competitor to Snapchat uh, and it's content that you can add into a little feed that exists for 24 hours. Um, you kind of create bits of content throughout the day. Now you might notice your friends or family using Instagram stories, um, but it, there's kind of this question of, of how to use them for business. There's actually a lot of uh, pretty low hanging, pretty potent uh, you know, tactics that you can go ahead and use, right? So the easiest one to think about is going behind the scenes. Uh, so you know, you're walking around your office, 
um, you do stories, you meet some of the coworkers, or you know maybe there's you know an office lunch kind of thing um, or an event you guys are doing, um, and you just kind of show a little bit of that of that of kind of the the flavor around the office uh, and and what the people are like, and that can be really engaging. It can flesh out a brand. Um, you know, especially if people are excited and having a good time. Uh, a takeover, a takeover is where you have an influencer use your Instagram account or Snapchat account um, and post stuff that they're doing throughout the day. So let's say you had a product in um, the sports industry or something, extreme sports, and then you found somebody that was going on like an epic mountain bike hike. You could give them account access and then they could post a story throughout the day. So it goes away. Um, it goes away so it doesn't like live on your timeline, so it's not going to kind of influence your brand, but it is like a really potent thing that you can have happen for a small amount of time. Um, you can show a product in use, so your product or services. You could have it be part of your story. Again, this allows you <coughs> to create content that doesn't have to be as like professional feeling on your Instagram account, um, but you know because it goes away. But at the same time, it lets you show uh, this kind of behind the scenes, maybe product usage. Uh, to to your to your audience, a special offers another really good thing to do uh, with stories because once again, since it goes away, it lends itself to kind of a time limited experience. Um, you can tease a piece of content, so whether it's you know a big video coming out on YouTube or a blog post or even an event or something like that, um, you know you can show a little bit of it before you actually start posting about it, um, and, and there's less pressure because again, it's kind of just off the cuff quick little moments. You can direct an action. What I mean by that is just tell people to do something. Hey, go to our website, check out this event, go check out our partners thing, um, etc. And pretty soon, this is rolled out for some users, pretty soon you'll be able to put links um, in your Instagram stories, which is huge. You, you can't link out on Instagram, which has been the marketer's problem for a long time, unless it's in your profile, which we will go over soon. Okay, let's talk about live. It happens within stories. I'm not gonna go too deep in this, but you can click the live button and then just like Facebook Live, um, it lets you uh, you know, do a live stream of what you're doing right there in the moment. The cool thing about it, the biggest utility of it is that it push notifies your followers, okay? Um, which is huge. It immediately lets people know that you're in there and you're live. Similar thing happens with Facebook Live as I'm sure you all have seen, but uh, this is a good way to kind of beat the algorithm as I noted in the beginning. So let's talk about live for business. Live is a great place to do a tutorial, um, especially if you have a product that's hands-on, going through, looking at something in an in-depth manner, li uh, a live Instagram stream is, is very well set up for that, right? Um, and it allows interaction. People can comment in, you can talk back to them, um, so you can take questions. Uh, uh, you can do a workshop, or you could live stream kind of a workshop like we're doing right now with Facebook. You can do a QA. and uh, which is good, especially for people that already have kind of a larger brand presence or people that are niche into an industry and have technical knowledge that they can give to a core audience. So if you're a designer and your network is designers, you know, Q&A Q through Instagram can be, you know, pretty, pretty strong. Uh, and then events, you can live stream events, um, which should be pretty self-evident. Um, it's kind of like what we're doing right now. And then you can also do everything that you do on stories as well. Uh, all that stuff will work pretty good. Okay, so let's talk about the big thing, which is business accounts. If you have a Facebook fan page and an Instagram account uh, for your same business, you can now tie them together if you have administrative access on your Facebook fan page and create an Instagram business account. Now this has a couple subtle changes and a couple deep changes. On the surface, everything is pretty similar, except for when people are in your profile, they can see a call to action. So you can say, contact us, click here, um, learn more kind of thing, um, which is huge, right? Because it encourages people to jump in and actually engage with your business. Uh, you can put an email address or call information um, right there in your profile, which is huge as well, especially for local business. People can contact you right there uh, and you can even put directions to your business uh, with an integration, I believe, with maps. So that's all pretty big stuff, uh, especially for local business, but, but really for anybody, because in the past, Instagram has felt like this place where it's only full of photographers and content creators and businesses are kind of second rung. These features allow you to have a little bit more access to your fans. We'll go over that in the benefits. Analytics, this is probably the biggest thing, which is that you have onboard analytics, first party platform analytics right there in your app. So you can see, how many people your posts are reaching, which is something you couldn't see before, and it's, it's absolutely huge. I mean, that's a really important um, 
you know, it's a, it's a really important factor. You can see the number of impressions. So how many people actually ended up seeing what you had. Uh, you can see the number of clicks to each of the aforementioned profile changes, the call to action, the link in the profile, the email, the call, etc. And then you can see demographics, which is super helpful as well. I mean, this includes age ranges, this in, which will help you advertise better. This includes time of day when people are on um, and interest and things like this. So the benefits of this are all pretty clear. I'll go through them. Um, you know, pretty quickly, access to fans. People have more access to you in terms of being able to actually engage with your business. They see your content, they go to your profile, they click the call to action, um, and then they, uh, you know, come in and engage. Uh, it allows you to make better decisions based on these analytics uh, about what kind of content you're posting, when you're posting it, who you're posting it to, and, and what it looks like. It gives you that official look, um, which is a small thing, but it's also, you know, it's important. You know, we, we want to have, if we're a business and we're marketing and we want to market as a business, it's good to look like a business. This looks like a business. Um, and then finally, beta. If you sign up for a cutting edge feature on any social media platform, like a business account on Instagram, you are far more likely to get beta versions of new features quicker in the future. Um, and it's just something to think about. I personally like to sign up for as many new features on social platforms as possible. I always opt into those. Um, okay, so let's go to the last thing. This isn't necessarily an update, but it's just something to be very aware of, which are Instagram advertisements. Um, and it is somewhat new. They launched in true last year. They deploy through Facebook's ad manager in the placements option. So if you're advertising, oh, let's see this. Aaron has a question. Would this be converting an existing account or creating a new business account? Aaron, that's fantastic. That's a great question. It's converting a business account and it's super, super simple. You just go to your account, your settings, and then you scroll down and you'll see, it's, it's, I think it's convert to business um, or switch to business. Uh, and uh, you know, there's you know, a lot of really simple guides out there as well. So um, you don't need to make a new account. No, you do need to have administrative access level on a Facebook fan page uh, though with a similar kind of name. Um, Okay, so yes, Instagram advertisements, they deploy through Facebook's advertising manager. If you are in Facebook's advertising manager, uh, you know, doing work, paying money, uh, distributing content, garnering engagement, you've probably noticed in the placement section, if you go to the option to expand the placements, that Instagram is now an ad destination. Just like the Facebook news feed or the right column advertisement, um, they're even starting to roll out ads in, in, in Messenger. Um, so in those placements, you can click on and off for Instagram advertisements. They work for almost any Facebook ad type. There's only a few where they don't. Unfortunately, uh, you can't use them to grow your follower account on, on Instagram. You still need to do kind of this business development hustle, working with other Instagram accounts, promoting Instagram in other places, growing brand awareness, driving people to your Instagram to grow your account. Strong hashtag strategies will help with that. Um, but you can use almost any Facebook ad type uh, you know, to encourage actions, to drive traffic to your website, use the same creative, same creative that's on Facebook, uh, you know, for your Facebook ad. And, and I just want to say as a final note that you might accidentally be doing Instagram ads if you're doing Facebook ads without knowing it. If you're using the ads manager to create ads and you're not clicking off Instagram, it will automatically create one. Um, and you just want to be wary of that. But this is a potent place to advertise. It works a lot better for some demographics than others. Um, it works very, very well within kind of this millennial uh, to Gen X uh, kind of age range. It plays a little bit better in, in uh, identifies as female demographics. Um, but yeah, it's a potent place to, to, to go and start playing around if you're paying money on social media to distribute advertisements. So those are our core Instagram updates. Um, they, um, Evan, I've actually got a couple of questions that come in on my Facebook Live. Please, stream. I would love to go over them here. We'll, we can go to the corresponding slide. Really quickly from uh, Ted Pate with uh, Big Local. Are there any negatives for switching to a business account? There are no negatives for switching to a business account if you are a business that looks like a business on Instagram. Now, if I was a photographer and my entire you know kind of network was built around me being just a really authentic photographer and there aren't the trappings of business, I don't sell product, then there's no need to switch to a business account. Um, it won't look good. But if you're a business and you're on Instagram, no, no, no drawbacks. All right, yeah. one more question. Uh, from my friend Robert Cheek in Arizona, I'm not sure if he's in Arizona right now, but that's where he lives. 
Um, he's been an influencer in the vegan health and fitness market probably for about 10 years now. Fantastic. And he's got a pretty large Instagram following, and he does Facebook Live fairly often. I'm looking at his stuff on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. um, he said, what platform would provides the best ROI for attracting new fo and relevant followers versus what platform provides the best ROI for conversions and sales? And if not specifically platforms, can you talk about approaches such as ambassador takeovers? Absolutely. Online contests, flash sales guest right. content and we should probably need to cover this in about two minutes so we can move on to Leah's content yeah no that's great so this is pretty industry specific and it matches up to this question from Rita about uh, recommending for a nonprofit. Um, is that certain industries play better in certain places when it comes to uh, to the industry what was your friend's name again Robert when it comes to his industry as I'm sure he's aware there's a lot of people playing in that space on Instagram and so Instagram can be a very good place to attract new followers to your business right um, it can be a good place to get in and play with other people that are creating content, other influencers in the space um, through leveraging their networks, doing partner posts where they post on, on their Instagram account and say, hey, go follow this person um, or you, know, you post and direct people to them or you do giveaways together where you distribute product through their page or a giveaway through their page that uh, – you know, the way that people enter to win is to go and follow your page. All that stuff is really good for finding new people. And the hashtag uh, world that is Instagram of all these micro hashtag communities is great for finding new followers. A lot easier to find organic followers than on Facebook, but you can't pay for them. What I will say is that Instagram is not a great place for directly encouraging conversions for many industries. For some industries, it's okay. Um, for industries that, that shoot very, very young. But it's it's not a very good place to to you know get conversions, to get people to the website, um, and to you know get them start taking action because there's not the link out capability in the profile. When they put that in stories, it'll get a little bit better, but still, until you can link out in that post, it's gonna be hard to drive people to the website. What you can do is, you know, Post your content or you know, have a piece of content on your website um, or elsewhere on the internet and then do a post on Instagram about it and say – in the post say head to the link in our bio um, you know, to check it out. That will drive a little bit of traffic. Um, aside from that, uh, it's not very good for, for driving conversions. So Facebook is a great place to drive conversions. It has a very you – know, Facebook and Twitter, um, LinkedIn, even Pinterest are all you – know, you click on – most of those posts you click on, you click on them and you go straight, straight to a different website, right? Um, so Instagram is a good place to get new followers, not the best place for, for conversions. And I hope there were a couple tactics in there that are helpful. Um, I know we're getting pretty deep on time. Should we go ahead and make the, make the switch? Yeah, I think so. We want to make sure we have plenty of time for Leah. Absolutely.